Hi, this is Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. Let's talk about blocks. Blocks is something you'll see on the left-hand side of your screen, depending on how you have your palettes set up. And I wanna to talk to you about what this means. The blocks are not necessarily a tool like you may be used to. You're used to using tools in the toolbox up here to create your websites by dragging these tools out onto the canvas and using them. But blocks are unique. Blocks are sort of pre-built sections or segments of a website using some of those tools. When you go to the blocks section, the blocks palette, you can see that there is a library. I'm gonna stretch it up here so you can see it a little bit better. You can see that there is a pre-built library of all kinds of segments or sections of a website. These are sort of presets, things that you can use to drag onto your canvas and then edit as parts of your website. Now, before we start using blocks, there's a couple of things you should know. First of all, a block is created by taking either a flex box container, a layout grid, or a layer, and designing it, putting objects in it, adding functionality to it, images, text, whatever, and then saving that as a block. In other words, saving it as a group or one design section for your website. So let's grab one quickly and drag it onto the canvas. Now you'll notice that this snapped up to the top of the page, and that's because this particular block was built with something that snaps to the top of the page, something called a layout grid. So before you can understand how blocks work, you'll have to understand at least something about layout grids, flex box containers, and or layers. And there are video tutorials about all of those particular tools. When we work with a block, we're working with something that was built with one or more of those tools. This happens to be a layout grid that is made up of four columns or four cells. If we double click on it, we can see that. We can see this is the layout grid that was sort of pre-designed. And you can do what you want with this. You can edit it, obviously, change the text, change the image, delete things, do whatever you want. And in fact, as you do, if you start to change things around, to use this, it does not destroy the original block that's stored in the library. That one will always be there. Further, as you make edits or changes, you can even save this block as your own. In fact, you can save any layer, flex box, container, or layout grid as a block that you can use later in another project or on another page or something that you've pre-designed. A good example of a block or the use of a block is let's say you design a header that you really like and you wanna use it often. Well, you would design that header, say in a layer, and then save it as a block. Something you can do by right clicking and going down to the section that says save as a block. Let me do that. I'm gonna move the camera down and I'm going to right click on this object. And you'll see there is an option to save as block, which means what you design in uh, with a layer or a flex box, or one of those can be saved and used later. Say you design a footer that you like to use throughout your website, rather than copying and pasting it over and over, you can just save it in the library called blocks. And you can even save it in your own category. So you might create a category called my blocks and save your blocks in that section or whatever you wanna call it. The big picture is blocks are a collection of presets, pre-designed sections of a website that you can use, you can edit, you can change, you can make your own and save your own. So now having said that as kind of a long-winded introduction, let's use some of these blocks. Now what I'm gonna do in this demonstration is not something you would typically do. You wouldn't necessarily build an entire website just with blocks, although technically you can. Usually you're just gonna to wanna to take the header or the footer or a section and use it and build it around what you're already designing. But in this demo, I'm gonna build a page basically out of blocks only. We're doing that just so that I can show you what kinds of blocks there are in the library and the, some of the kinds of things that you can do with them because some of them have some really kind of cool tricks. So let's start by going down here and grabbing a header. Here's a simple header. So we're gonna take this and drag it onto the canvas. And of course it snaps to the top because this block was made with something called a page header. A page header is a type of layer. It's a type of layer that always snaps to the top of the page. That's why it's called a page header. And so this one was designed with this particular tool. You can see that it's got a style with a black solid background and all of the things that may be associated with this particular page header are gonna show here. For example, this particular page header is associated with some CSS3 animation already built in. So if you're not familiar with how to do that, 
this is actually a great way to learn how that animation works. So we'll add that to our page. And of course, we could edit these. We would want to change this. This is a CSS menu, as is this. This is another CSS menu. And we could go edit and change those. Let's go grab another block, though, that we can add to our little demonstration here. And let's grab one. Here's a good welcome message. Now, here's a block uh, that was made from a layer. I double clicked on it so we could see what this is. This is a layer. It has some uniqueness to it. If you wanted to see how it was configured, this is where you do that. We can see that it's a floating layer. That's kind of important to know. We can look at the style of it, the background, gradients, etc. The other things it comes with are some instructions. Right here is an object called a note. I have a video about notes, but notes are something that you can leave instructions for yourself or another designer. These objects don't show on the web page. These are only showing in design mode. So we could actually leave this alone or delete it if we want to. But it's giving us some important information about this block, about this collection of objects that we'll want to pay attention to if we use this block. It also has a little HTML snippet of code, which is kind of interesting, that we're going to want to pay attention to and follow those instructions as well. Before we do, though, and we'll ultimately demonstrate that, let's add some more things to our page. I'm going to bring the camera down because we're going to be adding some stuff down here. So let's go find another section. Here's another one here. I just grab this and let's add this to our page. And let's see, this one is a layout grid, two column layout grid that's got a particular color background and it's got an image in it. But I'm going to keep going and we're going to add some more things here. Let's add another segment down here. So I put another, uh, let's see, this is a layout grid. And so if we want to double click on it to see how it's set up, we can. But we're going to keep moving and find a couple of other things here. I'm going to find some of these blocks that do some sort of cool tricks so we can demonstrate how you would edit them and use them for your website. Here's one right here. Let's drag that one out there. Uh, this is an interesting one made from, let's see, that's a text object. It, it, this is a couple of different layout grids. So remember, a block is a collection of objects, not just one layout grid. In this case, it's two layout grids with some text. And this happens to be a jQuery object, actually. And you can, we'll see what that does as we look at the HTML code. So I'm just going to keep adding some things. This will make more sense as we move on. Let's get some more content for our demo website that's interesting. Here's a fun one. We're just going to drag it over. This one looks like it's also a layout grid with three columns. Got some images and some text. And let's do a couple more here to make our website complete. So let's drag out that, use it as kind of a footer. And let's see, maybe one more object. Let's see, let's use this one. Okay, so what I've done is I've just drug out all these blocks onto this page. And again, this is just for demonstration purposes. You wouldn't necessarily build an entire page out of blocks. But I just did because I want to show you what these do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to preview this to see what it looks like. Now brace yourself because it's not going to look great because we haven't toyed with any of these yet. We haven't followed some of these instructions. Some of these blocks come with special effects and we need to do some things to tweak them. So let's just click F5 to preview and see what we have to work with. So what I'm going to do is bring that page over here into focus. I've got it on another screen here. Okay, so here's our page in a browser. And let's just take a look at what we have. It looks kind of messy, actually. There's something wrong. And it's because we haven't configured things yet. But let's at least look. So there's kind of that header. We're going to scroll down and see. There's another section. Oh, there's what those jQuery bars do. So we can see some of this has some special effect associated with it. But we need to tweak it a little bit. So let's go study what our blocks do. So first of all, this block comes with instructions. It says before, before we can use this, we have to make sure that our page is set to 100%. So let's do that. So I'm going to go to the page properties. And let's set the uh, page alignment. It's telling me to set the page alignment to 100%. So we're going to do that. That'll help us. And it also says we need to set the arrow position. What does that mean? Here's a little bit of code. Oh, and there is a comment here. This is move the arrow to outside of the layer. Okay, so we'll do that. You don't really need to know why, but that's what the designer did. So we're going to take this arrow and move it outside of the layer. We'll find out why in a few minutes. And let's go on down and see what else we need to adjust. We've got something here. And there's our skills. Oh, here's our progress script. In fact, let's double click on one. Oh, here's where we would do that too. So if we want to change the value of this bar to not go to 80%, we want to change it to go to 60% or whatever, we can do that. There it is. Looks like this one was also at 60%, but we could change this one to 90 or whatever we want. And that's how we would edit those. This is the script that makes that run. 
and there's something happening here and notice these are animated but let's go see what we've got now okay I'm gonna press F5 again and see what our blocks do and again we're working with a lot of blocks at one time not something you typically do but this would be kind of fun just to play with these alright so now it makes a little more sense because our uh, our blue section of the website now actually fills the page because we set it to 100%. That's why it looks this way. Let's scroll down and see what happens. Aha, I already see one thing that happens. Here's our animation in effect. Remember our, our top header menu, the CSS menus that we used up here, those um, had an animation effect to them. And look, look at what it is. As we scroll down, it looks like it's a sticky object stays right to the top of the page and also fades into black so that's kind of cool so you're getting some great effects without having to program them you're just using something that somebody pre-built pre-designed for you also I noticed that our arrow is down here the one that they had us uh, move that's because that's how the script works that means we're gonna have to connect this to some kind of a bookmark so if we click on it right now it doesn't go anywhere so we're gonna wanna make a bookmark or an anchor so that when we click on that it takes us down to the part of the page we want it to go to so let's see what else we have here. Okay, we've got another block here. Now this one kind of worked out to be funny because it has white space. So I'll show you a little trick to fix that. We might change the background color of the page to make that look better. Here's another section we have, and there's our skills. And as we scroll down, you can see we have some effects. So these effects are happening because they're triggered by a scroll. So let's reload this page really quick. I'm refreshing it, and watch when I scroll down. Aha! we're getting some cool effects. I'm actually going to move the camera down too so you can see that again. I'm going to reload the page and you see because we're already scrolled down there, let's go up here and reload the page and as we scroll look at what we get. All kinds of funny effects because somebody's already built them for us. So let's clean this up a little bit just for fun. We've got some white space over here and we've got some white space over here. So here's a nice little trick. What we could do is go to the page properties for this page and let's change the background color of this page from white to something like this color here so we'll go here we'll get more colors we're going to use the eyedropper grab this color click OK now I've got a new background color for this page and it sort of shows up as you can see if I move the camera you can see it's over here and let's do a preview and see what we did this is just a great way to learn how some of these tricks work some of these effects that you wouldn't normally know how to do maybe without some study you can start with a block that's already doing these things and uh, be ahead of the game so here comes our page preview and a browser and again we've got this uh, we'll scroll down we've got a little effect here oh, it looks a little better now that we made the background color to match that looks a little bit better and there's our effects I think we have another one down at the very bottom here. Let me move the camera. The camera screen is not big enough for this sometimes. And let's reload the page and see what happens. There we go. That's what it looks like when you scroll down to this page. There's one with a form. So let me uh, close this and let's kind of take apart some of these so we can see how they work. You'll notice that there was some animation down there at the bottom. Let's go take a look at that. These sort of animate when they come into place, didn't they? So let's find out why. Well, you just have to kind of click around. If you click on the on the uh, layout grid itself and look around and see if there's something that you can find well there's no event so it's not an event doing that um, maybe it's the objects themselves let's double click on an object and see what's happening here and we find that in fact there is an animation so this object this image is appearing um, with an animation transition animation so if you look at it and edit it you can see how that's been set up and then maybe duplicate it in another object if you want but it's a great way to learn how this works so I'm going to edit that and you can see how that one is so the point of this is you can take something somebody's already built and just work with it and change these images change the heading keep the animation or remove the animation if you want here was another one you'll notice when we scroll down these kind of animated into place let's double click on one of these and see how that works there are an, uh, sorry there is an event that says when we scroll on scroll reveal that means when we scroll down to that object called font awesome icon 11 it's gonna have a special effect and what it does is it plays an animation and it plays this particular animation so if you're working with events or learning to use events here's a great tutorial just take apart some of these blocks and see what they do double click on this again and see this one's got no animation but it has an event 
So it's kind of fun to work with something somebody else did that might be a little more advanced and then build off of what they did. So I think you get the point of what I'm trying to say, but the prerequisite for working with blocks, in my opinion, is to first of all, have some understanding, some basic understanding of the software, especially an understanding about layout grids and how they work. Watch those videos. Watch the video about the Flexbox um, container so you'll see how that functions and why it snaps the way it does. Watch the video or videos about layers because there's a lot of blocks built with layers and you can see how they work. But this just takes your web design to a new level by being able to start with a header or a footer or a section of your website that does something a little more special than maybe you knew how to do. And now you'll be able to learn how to do. And then if you want to create your own, just save them as a block. Let's do that. Let's make our own just so you can see how that works. Let's pretend like we've edited this one. In fact, let's not pretend. Let's actually edit it. So we'll change this to Greg something. And we can see that this is now... Uh, my own block and if I wanted to save it in my library I would right click save this as a block and what I can do is call it whatever I want to call it and I can even put it in or create a category for myself I happen to create a category called my blocks and you could make your own category by clicking this button and we'll call this you know Greg's block or whatever you want to call it so what happens is by saving this in the blocks library I can scroll down here and you'll see my category that I made called my blocks right here. And there's my saved block. Kind of cool. So before I go, let me show you one more really fun thing that's built into the blocks. I think you're going to really like it. This is a great and clever use of layers. If you've worked with a layer tool, you may not know some of the powerful things it can do. And again, this is where the blocks really helps. I'm going to grab this block right here and just drag it out onto my page. Now you'll notice that it didn't snap anywhere. It didn't snap to the bottom. It didn't snap to the top. And the reason for that is this was built with a layer that doesn't snap anywhere. It's a special kind of layer. If I double click on it, we can see that it is a layer that is a sticky layer and it sticks to a particular part of the page. And so I'm gonna click OK. It doesn't matter where we put it in design mode because this particular layer does something kind of fun. I'll show you what it does. We're gonna do another F5 so we can preview our page now. And I want you to see what this particular block does. You'll notice in the bottom corner of my page is that sticky layer with all the social media buttons. Look at what it does. It literally sticks. Bring it down here so you can see a little better. As we scroll down the page, this would really be a handy block to use. So if you want your social media buttons or any kind of content to never leave the eyes of your visitor, you can use this block and you can adjust where it's going to sit on the page, how it behaves, and all that good stuff. People can even close it by clicking that X. So that's kind of a fun one to work with. I think people would use that one a lot. Here's another one too. Let's get rid of this and let's try this one. This is a really fun object or, or block. Now this was made with also a layer called a sticky layer and it has a little bit different orientation and I'll show you what it does. I'm going to click OK. We're going to click F5 and we're going to watch our page and now in a browser and look what happened. We've got this really fun animated social media button activity here and as we scroll down it sticks to the edge no matter how wide our page gets we have our little animation social media buttons that's just kind of a fun advantage right there as you're learning to use these block objects and drag them onto the page just feel free to play with them you can't break them because you'll never destroy the original even if we took this apart and messed it up and did all kinds of bad things to it or deleted it or whatever it doesn't matter because the original is always going to be right over here in the blocks library where you can get it again and make your own from this or whatever you want to do. So hopefully that gives you some introduction to what you can do with blocks. Again, I'll reiterate, before you play with them too much, you're going to want to at least learn how layers work, learn a little bit about the flex box, a little bit about the layout grids, and then as you work with blocks, it's going to make more sense. Pretty soon you'll be designing your own blocks and saving them in the block library of your 90-second website builder.